listen, y'all, if you guys are enjoying these episodes, hit that like button below and uh, why don't you turn that red subscribe button gray? You know, if you guys like Bills and NFL content, that's what we're here for, guys. Sponsored by Mr. Rogers Holmes. Sean Rogers, the top 1% realtor out in Arizona, the Valley of the Sun. Sean Rogers Holmes, ho! Oh! Yeah. I don't know what that was, I sir. I don't know. I'm good. Just a moment struck me. Smash that like button! All right, anyway. Oh, and don't forget, you can join Patreon uh, down in the description. Yes, and our merch. We have a merch store that we can do on Etsy. <laughs> yeah, buy some shirts, man. Anyway. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. Speaking of buying shirts, speaking of things that um, need some more clarification, not only our intros, but there's a bunch of things that need some clarification. The combine, Paul. Ah, uh, yes. I think a lot of people get a little confused about how to use the results of the combine for your benefit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody gets attached to the numbers, right? Like, everybody's watching offensive tackles, and they run a 4-8, and they go, ooh. Yeah. An offensive tackle that runs a 4-8. Ooh. But... When, when are you ever going to have 380 pounds with nothing to do on a football field? And the answer is just run them in a straight line 40 yards down the field. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You never, you're never going to send an offensive tackle on a streak route. Never. No. It's never going to happen. So there's some things that are fun, right? And there's some things that are window dressing, and there's some things that actually yeah. are kind of cool. Yeah, you got a six foot seven, three hundred thirty pound gunner. That's it. That's it. Can you imagine? He's so good. Can you imagine oh. those poor little those poor little five foot nine defensive backs playing special teams? Ruined. Yeah. Ruined. <laughs> ruined. That's a business decision I don't want to make. But you you bring up an interesting point. Is some of the stuff is window dressing. Some of the stuff is it's very shiny. So everyone like oh oh the guy ran a four two one. You know it's a yeah it's great it's amazing. Right. You're in spandex running a straight line. Right. On basically a track. Right. Okay. But, however, looking, I think what a lot of people should do in the, the approach that you take, Paul, is this, is you should use those numbers to back up some of the things that you've already seen on tape. Yeah. Or some of the things that you wanted to see from, the, like, for example, if you're talking about a guy that before his senior season, he did, he, he used pension. Let's say he benched 15 reps. You see him at the combine, he does 13. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a guy that has a quote-unquote work ethic that you think can have taken onto your squad. Right. If the guy does it 20 times, okay. You know, he, 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 for two months he's been working his tail off. But then we also have to take this. There's a little asterisk there. There are guys that specialize in just combine drills. That's exactly right. Yeah, there's there's – these guys will train once their college season is over and even during the college season for months because you can make a lot of money off of what happens in the scouting combine. Look at Don Terry Poe. Don Terry Poe is a perfect example. Yes. Fern Goldston. These were all guys that destroyed Danny the combine. Danny Shell destroyed the combine, destroyed it, and it made them an incredible amount of money. Because, I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. Who's our favorite? Who's our favorite, though? Oakland Raiders. Oh, oh, the wide receiver that ran a four-two. Darius, uh, Darius Hayward Bay. Because of course what? the Raiders drafted him. <laughs> of course they did. Credit to these players. Like you got to be a really good college player to get invited to the combine, right? So credit yes. to the guys. You've obviously had a good career to be invited to the combine. So you you've done a good job. Credit to you. With that being said, I have to ask, what is your Favorite drill at the combine. Which one? Like... <laughs> Here we go. The wonder. Did you bring a piece of paper? I did bring a piece of paper. Did you bring a ruler? Ah, that's what I forgot. I yeah, I wanted. I figured we're, we could do hand size. Totally forgot. I'll, but it's funny, guys. You got to. I sent Paul the link that had all the 
current quarterback's hand sizes. Those are the two of my fun. Those are two of the funniest for me. The Wonderlick and the hand, hand size, size because it just cra- it's so funny to see that reaction first out of you. Second of all, what's the it's Drew that doesn't like the hand yeah, size. Yeah, Drew right? thinks yeah. his mind. He calls it hand size season yeah. on the Rock Power Report. Guys, it's hand size season. He's not wrong. My favorite drill, though, if we're, if we're being honest and serious, I love the three cone mm-hmm. because it it relates to so many different positions on the field. Yeah. Um, okay, you're a slot receiver. Mm-hmm. You have the best three cone. You're going <laughs> to – you get a three cone that's like six, like, you know, the low sixes. Um, that's a hell of a guy. Plus, it relates to linebackers. How's your in, – in, you know, how's your quickness in getting into mm-hmm. the hole? Uh, defensive tackles, rights, change of pace, you know, all other stuff. I just, I just love the three cone. We used to make jokes on the, on this show all the time talking about that's only where Belichick sits. That's it. Cone. Just sit there at the three cone. Drafts those that guys. That. Okay. That's what I need. Well, and then Nikhil Harry happened, and you're like, I don't think uh, he did it was a three cone. Cone. <laughs> yeah, that's the only three cone he got was that Dairy Queen. I was just so, about to do that. that's all. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of drills at the combine that I think are really really important together, right? And you're right. You shouldn't learn anything from anybody at the combine about what kind of what player you saw on film, right? Yeah. It really should confirm because on film you can look at a guy and go, man, he's fast. Look at another guy, man, he's fast. And the combine is like, okay, who is faster? Does it matter? No, they're both fast, yeah. right? Yeah. But it does build that separation for you. The Bills do a lot of work in the Combine, and one of the biggest things is interviews. Interviews are probably the most important piece of it, and it's the one thing that reporters just don't know, right? Because things yep. move so fast, you can't possibly track, as a reporter, who's with who, when. Like, yep. remember Deion Sanders? Remember the Deion Sanders story? Uh-huh. Deion Sanders, when he was at the Scouting Combine, and this was back forever ago. It was one of the first Combines. When he yeah. ran his 40, he just left? Well, it wasn't that. They said, they're like, okay, Dan, we're going to go do interviews. And he's like, well, I only want to do interviews with these three teams because they're the only ones that have the top three pick. So that's the only teams I want to talk to. All right. <laughs> we good? <laughs> okay. That was it. That, that's, But that doesn't happen anymore, right? No, no, no. That doesn't happen there's anymore. These, there's these teams that will employ guys that are like FBI. Yeah. Like to do background checks mm-hmm. on all of these guys that they think about drafting because you got to think about it. That's your career is on the line. Not only yeah. the, kid, the kid that's getting drafted, but yours as you know someone who drafts somebody, especially in the first round, uh, you're, you're going to be linked to that player. Right. And you need to make sure that you're investing in – you're making a very positive investment. Like like you said with the speed, if you're talking about a guy that has – yeah, on tape, this guy flies around the field, but we look at his 40 time and it's not. I mean, that's that's where those, those scouts when they go, well, he's got game speed. He's got yeah. game speed. Oh, okay. You may not be able to run a you know, great straight line, but right. this guy gets to point A, point A to point B. Right. Yeah. I think what you're looking for at the combine is both to confirm what you've seen on tape and what are some things that you can't teach. Mm-hmm. You can't teach speed. You nope. can't teach superhuman strength. And what do the Bills do in the first round? They, they want the physically freaks. freak athletes. They pick freaks. Exactly. So... In a way, the, while the interview process is, is huge, I mean, Allen is a freak. We can agree to that. Edmonds is a freak. Yep. Allen had 37 one day, by the way. Because you said the Bills put a lot of faith in the interview. In the interview, Bro, he was in Wyoming. What else did he have to do? Well, he sat there and practiced that test every day. Because Allen's a worker. Like, Allen's a worker. Do you think he just walked in and scored a 30-plus on the wonder? Like, no, homie worked with that. Well, when, when you and I take it. We're going to do that live. Dude, I'm going to put up Frank Gore style numbers. <laughs> How many points do I get for my name on it? Three. Perfect. Maybe. I don't know. If we had to, if we had to poll the hashtag nation, they probably wouldn't spell your name right. <laughs> no. No. It took me a year. Guys. You know how many vowels they, they put in your name? <laughs> I do, this I, guy's never had this many A's in his report card. <laughs> For the first year that we were friends, I absolutely had the end of your last name spelled incorrectly. All the time. D-A? Or not the top. Good enough.
I don't know what happened. You turn into a, I don't know what happened. Great, not to talk. You turn into a pole mower? <laughs> I'm not to I don't know. <laughs> this thing won't go. Put the prior, all right. Push the button. All right, um, so but back on back but, on track. But the freaks, though, like, okay, yeah. interviews and freaks. And so if we're, if we're slanting this towards the Buffalo Bills, interviews and freaks. But there's another thing, too, that you have to bring up. And you brought it up before, and I think right before we get out of here. Ex- the explosion. explosion. Can you explain yeah, the yeah, explosion yeah. factor? So there's, everybody's talking about these offensive linemen. So I want to just bring up the, like, as a grade, because sometimes – it's really deceiving what teams value, right? Yes. So they don't always value individual drills. They value the total drill package, right? So as an example, three offensive linemen, all, or three, three defensive linemen, all from Georgia. You have Jordan Davis, who people are just drooling over because yeah. they think he's a late-round, first-round first pick. Devontae Watt and Trayvon Walker, okay? So the... Items that you want to pay attention to is you want to pay attention to the 40-yard dash, but specifically the 10-yard split on that 40-yard dash. So they measure each 10-yard group in a 40 to see how quick somebody got off. So for offensive lineman, defensive lineman, it's not the 40-yard dash. It's the 10 split. What did they run in that first 10 yards, right? After that, it's the vertical. And after that, it's the broad jump because those are all measuring how explosive a player is. And somebody like David Johnson, like, blew the combine away. He, like, blew it away. Uh, there, there's nobody even close to him, right? And a lot of times you see these really small receipt, really small running backs who put up, like, a 4 2 1, and their birds nowhere. Wait, no, it's, it's nowhere. weird. It's okay. You got this great track speed, straight line speed, but you don't have any explosiveness out of the gate. And right. there will be guys that will run, like, four fives. Four, 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 fives. That there are some defensive linemen that will beat their ten split. Yeah, right. it's like what? Right, exactly. For ten yards, you kept up with a freaking wide receiver that ran a four five. Right, like and that, but that's like for the Bills. If you're looking at slot receiver, I'm looking at the ten split. I'm looking at the three cone. Yes. Right. That's what I'm paying attention to if I'm looking for a slot receiver. Right. Or a slot corner. Or even a slot corner. Right. But for a defensive lineman, I'm, I'm looking at similar drills, but not the same. So we'll use Georgia's defensive lineman just as an example. Yeah. Jordan Davis, uh, again, who everybody is talking about right now, put up a four, uh, four seven, eight in the 40. We're not going to pull the splits because the splits are all pretty close. They're all in like the mm-hmm. one six ish range. Yeah. Um, so you put up a four seven, eight in the 40, a 32 inch vert, and a broad of 10 3. 32? 32. Right, I know. But that 10 8's good. 10 eight's good, or 10 3. 10, 10 3. 3. 10 3 is still fine, right, for a defensive line. 10, 10 3 is still very good. Devontae Watt put up a 4 7 7 in the 40, a 29 inch vert, and a 9 3 broad. Yeah, right? So there's separation so not there. Up, not out. Right. I mean, we talked about, you know, so. Yeah. Finally, Trayvon Walker, 4 5 1 in the 40. Excuse me? Yeah, he was like he was like a one. He was almost one four in the, in the tenth split. Yeah, that hustle. Um, broad jump was ten three. Bert thirty five point five. Lock it in. But that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> if you're on film and you're like, man, Jordan Davis and Trayvon Walker look great. You look and now you can actually judge who is the more explosive athlete by taking those three measurables and you can turn them into something that's probably a little more valuable information. Yeah. Who's quicker off the ball? Who's more powerful off the ball? Probably Trayvon Walker over Jordan Davis. Yeah. So yeah. how much do you value that, right? Is this a guy that you want to go up and get? Or are you pretty good with going with Trayvon Walker light, Jordan Davis? People love Jordan Davis right now. He's yeah. a talk for yeah. He's a talk for and that's where the draft that, that, that's where it goes from combine to draft you're sitting there going okay we have a chance at one of these three guys we're happy with any of them we don't need right to move. right exactly and we got like four picks until they get to us and we know that these teams need don't have these needs that we have that's exactly right. so I mean it's and if you're and if you're watching film because again we've said it before the combine it's gonna be the theme of this week the combine should just confirm what you see if you look at an athlete like Trayvon Walker but he's like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction when he's on the line <laughs> Obviously, the numbers don't align with the product, right? 
obviously. So there, there's some important things to pay attention to, right? If, yeah. you're, if you want it, if you really think the Bills need a slot receiver, a slot corner, then you're going to pay attention to that 40 time, that 10 yard split in the three cone drill, right? Um, if you're thinking offensive line and defensive line, if you're looking at the broad, the bird, um, I'm offensive lineman. You can look at the three cone. It's a, it's fine. For guards. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Right. It's not the greatest judge for those big guys. I usually the like the, in the linebacker, does the, what's the, the five, the, oh, five, the, ten, the five, five, ten, the 20 yeah. yard. Yeah. The 20 yard split. And they move side to side. But, I mean, yeah. And then, uh, that's it. One more thing for the combine.